She's so fine, my 109. <laughs> She's so fine, my 109. <laughs> Happy 109th episode of 55 and 5. We were celebrating with an Oreo. <laughs> Get down on Oreos. <laughs> Ian Rickabody, Perry Sulkin. <laughs> we're having a fun night. We taped these at night after we taped Last Stop Penn Station. We have a good time. We get a little silly. And uh, tonight, this one, I, you know, we were having fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to celebrate the Jackie Robinson of professional wrestling, Kerry. He's generally considered. I'm going to blow this one. I'm going to blow it for you. And I just, because I know you're going to have memories of him. I know you're, you may have seen him live. Um, Generally considered to be the first person to break the color barrier in professional wrestling, at least on a major scale. So I'm going to show the fans this photo. Get a nice look at the strapping gentleman, one of the great technical wrestlers of his day. Carrie, what can you tell me about Luther Lindsay? Well, I'm trying to remember. There was a black wrestler out of Louisville. Mm -hmm. whose name I can't come up with. Well, maybe it's maybe you have more information, but or maybe you don't. Um, but Luther Lindsay, one of the first black stars, I guess he preceded Bobo Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He, well, yeah. or okay, they were contemporaries. OK. You know, in a way, a, he predates him by a, a hair, I think. And I don't know where Bearcat Wright comes in. Mm hmm. Bear, Bearcat Wright was a, around the same time, but the key with Luther Lindsay is that he broke the color barrier in the South. Right. And the North and the Northeast had had, quote unquote, integrated matches, uh, you know, a little bit longer. He was the first man with regularity to wrestle in the South against white opponents. I'm sure it was on a state by state basis. It was. It and or county by county. Um, God bless Luther Lindsay because it wouldn't have been easy. That's for sure. Absolutely. And uh, he is generally believed to be the first African-American challenge for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And he was he himself was recognized as the quote unquote NWA Negro champion. OK. And so he would challenge Luthez quite a bit. And, you know, credit also, you know, all as much credit as we can give to Luther Lindsay, give some credit to Luthez also for coming into some of these hostile environments. If you've seen the um, the documentary Sweet Daddy Siki, even until mm -hmm. 1961, when he faced Buddy Rogers for the title in Charlotte, even then they knew they could barely lock up. Buddy Rogers and Sweet Daddy Siki made an audible, had Sweet Daddy push Buddy Rogers out of the ring and that right. it. And, and that, you know, have him walk out. But um, he drew a 90 minute draw with Luthez in their first match for the title. And that really helped kind of solidify the breaking of the color barrier. Um, he had a really famous moment in Kingsport. We're back to Kingsport again. Okay. And uh, he faced Ron Wright. And, uh, you know about Ron Wright? Yeah. You know about the chisel? The chi yeah, we, we mentioned the chisel. <laughs> and uh, apparently he was the first black athlete to come to Kingsport and wrestle a white opponent. They had the Tennessee National Guard in attendance. It's fearing the worst, assuming the worst. And the fans cheered for Luther Lindsay over Ron Wright. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of a kind of a, a little bit of a heartwarming moment there. I, I'm sure it wasn't easy though. I'm sure it wasn't. What filled. year was that? I, I believe that was 19. Uh, oh. I believe it was 57. I'm probably wrong on that, but it's around 57 to 61 ish. Uh, he also has a number of distinctions. Um, he feuded with Iron Mike DiBiase, Mad Dog Bashan, uh, Moondog Maine, Tony Bourne, and uh, Pat Patterson. So, so that tells us he wrestled out in this San Francisco, Portland, yeah, Northwest there. Tony Bourne in Portland, Pat Patterson in San Francisco. Quite a long career, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, really just, you know, a huge career. And he also wrestled... In uh, with the Hearts, he also wrestled in Calgary. Right, yeah. Stampede. Right, that's where you would see his name. Never made it to New York City. Yeah, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, honestly, by the time I started with the magazines and everything, mm -hmm. his name would come up now and then. But yeah. he really wasn't by the mid to late '60s. He really wasn't a star. I think he had his time yeah. in the 50s and early 60s. But nevertheless, great groundbreaker. Yeah. And, uh, 
really good card. Yeah, another great photo. Um, he died in the ring. One of the interesting oh, shit. facts. Yeah, he came off the top rope with a big splash and uh, kind of superfly style splash. He landed on his opponent, got the pin as planned, didn't couldn't revive. And uh, I believe he had a massive heart attack, either upon impact or as he was as he was coming down. Um, this one's really tough in a good way because there is a lot written about Luther and Lindsay, and it's really tough to narrow down just what to say. Right. <laughs> so, you know, this one, I recommend Greg Oliver's pieces. I recommend there's a piece about his time in Kingsport. There's a lot of good stuff about Luther and Lindsay. Uh, not a lot of video. I uh, did some tag team wrestling in Crockett later on. Um, so there's some of that from the 60s, but not really. Uh, but a lot written and a lot of great memories about him. So I encourage folks, if you're interested, to please go seek that out. Um, he's won more titles than that you can even list. Uh, he was the one of the penultimate kind of black champions of his day. So just a trailblazer. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame as one of the legacy guys and so they didn't really pay tribute to him. They didn't really honor him. They just said, oh, yep, he's in. He's in. And uh, which is a nice accomplishment, but it would have been cool if they did a, one of their great pieces. Right. They, they, have the, they have the studio. They have the team to do it. And uh, even held the All Japan Tag Team titles. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, quite a career. I wish I would have had a little more to say about him. Yeah, he's one of those names you hear, and uh, he doesn't get the appreciation he deserves. So... Luther Lindsay gone gone a little too soon. Uh, groundbreaker Trailblazer up up there with the Bearcat Rights with the Sweet Daddy Seekies. Guys that you should hear more and more about and, and for every reason you just don't. Well, good selection, Ian. And what are we? We're up to 110. 110. Tomorrow's 110. And tomorrow we, we have one of the bona fide A-list, A-plus Hall of Famers. All right. So, yeah. Look forward to it. <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. We want to thank you for watching 109. Hope you join us tomorrow for 110 here on 55 and 5. For Carrie and his Oreos, <laughs> for, for HR producer, I'm Ian Riccoboni. Happy wrestling, everybody. Bye.